Electromagnetic radiation interactions through the atmosphere and at the Earth's surface are really quite complex. And this is why it's really important to understand a lot of these interactions before we start looking at imagery. So if we have a look at the diagram here, we start off with the sun as our form of EMR. And the sunlight goes down through the atmosphere and at some point, at various points throughout the atmosphere actually, it can be reflected, transmitted or absorbed by different particles in the atmosphere. So they may, they may be um, water particles for example, or they may be other gases, other particulars, so um, bits of, you know, parts of smoke or haze, anything like that. And this is particularly noticeable in the blue region of the spectrum, which is why we actually have blue sky. So a lot of blue light actually gets scattered in the atmosphere here. So we lose some of that, not all of it actually makes, down, makes it down to the surface of the Earth. So some of, that, some of that scattered light actually will go back up to a sensor. So it will go back up to, the, to an airborne sensor or to a satellite, for example, before it even gets to the surface of the Earth. The remainder of the light actually goes down, and we're just looking at, at, at an aquatic environment, for example, but the types of interactions are very similar, whether it's aquatic or terrestrial, but we're just using this as an example here. At the surface of the water, we have various interactions as well. So if you think about looking at a water surface, and if it's, if it's a windy day, for example, you might see a bit of chop on the water, and you'll see a lot of speckle in terms of the light there. And so this affects what light is actually going down to the bottom of the um, bottom of the seabed, for example. If you have a really flat uh, water surface, so it's a really nice, calm day, you'll have you'll have some sunlight that goes in, but you'll also have an amount that might be reflected directly off the surface of the water as well, in a mirror-like um, example. So if you think about a really, really flat, calm day, if the sun is at a particular angle and you're looking into the sun, then you might actually see that direct reflection. Within the water, there's also a number of different interactions as well. So you'll have the light bouncing around off different particles in the water, um, off the, you know, within the water itself as well, which actually absorbs light. And that's before light actually gets down to the bottom of the bottom of the sea floor and has any interactions with sea grasses, algae, coral, anything like that. And then if you think about the path of the light, it has to go all the way back up to get back up to the sensor. So these interactions are really complex and it's really important to understand which particular wavelengths of light this affects the most because it's not it's not uniform. So for example, blue light we know will go further into water than red light for example and this is why the ocean is blue because it can get all the way down. Um, so these, these differences between the different wavelengths and the mediums in which they're interacting are really important to understand what we're looking at in images.